Hello. This program demonstrates a while loop. This can be very useful for entering names, uh, particularly when you don't know how many names are to be entered initially. A for loop is excellent when you know exactly how many times you want a loop to cycle, but a while loop is better if you don't know how many times you want that loop to cycle. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter names and this program will accept names until we enter an empty string, which will happen if we just press enter. Now, a while loop is a pretest loop. Pretest. That means you have to have some variable to test before the loop will start, to test whether the loop can start. And so here we have an input, and we're going to type in a name and store it in a variable called name. This will be a string, as you know. When you use input by itself, you get a string. Now, Look at the next line. This is the most important line. That means while name does not equal an empty string. So this loop will continue to cycle as long as we are entering names. When we press enter, the value of name will be an empty string. And we'll see that when we print it out down here after the loop. Notice that this is after the loop because it's not indented. So let's, uh, let's give this a try. See how it runs. Here we go. All right, I'm going to try uh, Penny, Penny, Kenny, and Jenny. And let's say I'm done. So if I press enter, that stops the loop. Now notice this line here, final name is. If I go to the end of that line, you'll notice it finishes with a space. And you should expect that because that's what you get inside of a print statement when you separate items with a comma. You get a space generated automatically. And so name is an empty string at this point. Okay, so this, this program would have kept going as long as we entered names. Now let's, uh, let's just try a little variation of it. I'm going to try, I use a variable called num here. And we'll once again use input. And this time, we'll let the prompt be enter an integer. Now, I'm going to run this right here in the interactive window. I'm not writing a program right now, but this will execute as soon as I press enter. So here we go. Only this time, I'm going to enter an integer. I'll try like 12. OK, seemed to work OK. Let's see what's in that variable num. It's 12, but it's inside a string. So you see, you can enter numbers inside strings. Now, I won't be able to do any mathematics with it at this point. You can't do mathematics with the number inside of a string unless you convert it into an int or a float. Well, we can do that too. Let's try num equals int num. The int function will convert a string, if possible, into an integer. And let's see what's in num again after we run that line. You'll notice that it's 12, but without the, the apostrophes. So now it is, in fact, a number, and we could do arithmetic with it. Well, this is the secret to entering a series of numbers, and particularly when you don't know how many numbers you want to enter. You're going to use something like this. You're going to use something like this. Only, I suppose, based on the variable that I used here, you would say, while well, num does not equal an empty string. Just remember that even although you think you're entering integers, and you might be required to enter integers, you can enter them into strings and then convert them inside the loop if necessary. This is a very important technique. Hope that helps.